In this video, I'm going to talk about the severe combined primary immunodeficiencies. So I'm not talking about anything acquired, like what would happen in late stage HIV and AIDS. These are patients that have some sort of genetic anomaly that has led to basically the breakdown of both the T cell compartment and the humoral compartment. If you want an overview of how immunodeficiency occurs, the epidemiology behind it, or the symptoms that we tend to look for in these kids, check out the primary immunodeficiency overview video where I go over this information. For now though, let's talk about the um, changes that lead to severe combined immunodeficiency. So basically, if you think about B and T cell development, you have your hematopoietic stem cell, which becomes a common lymphoid progenitor. The common lymphoid progenitor is responsible for making B cells and NK cells in the bone marrow. It's also ready to move on to the thymus where it makes T cells. So if you have a defect in any of these decisions, you could actually break down all of them. There are several enzymes that are important for creating these cells. ADA is a big one. As you can see, it plays a role in both the differentiation into a pro B cell and the differentiation into a pro T cell. There are also a couple that they have in common once they've already made this split, namely RAG1 and RAG2 and Artemis. These are the ones that we're going to keep an eye on the most. So for the severe combined immunodeficiencies, here's kind of a list of ones I want to talk about. First off, Omen syndrome. This is caused by hypomorphic mutations in genes that lead to a patient being deficient in functions associated with both B and T cell compartments. Basically, this is a RAG1, RAG2 deficiency. RAG1 and RAG2 are important for rearranging the V, D, and J exons, okay? So this is literally what enables us to say, if I have, here's my gene, and here's all my V regions, here's my D regions, and here's my J regions, right? RAG is what's going to let me take this V, this D, and this J to make a complete heavy chain or beta chain. So if I'm deficient in RAG, I can't make heavy chains or beta chains. I also can't make light chains or alpha chains. Really? I can't make anything. Um, so patients experience erythroderma, failure to thrive, diarrhea, severe opportunistic infections, eosinophilia, low immunoglobulins, with the exception of often an elevated IgE. Not really sure why that one happens. And they also will see like an increase in oligoclonal T cells and memory T cells if they even make them at all. Okay. All right. What's the next one? ADA deficiency. This basically is an adenosine deaminase deficiency. What does that mean? Well, you biochem majors can probably figure this one out. Basically, this deficiency is due to a lack of the enzyme ADA. It basically results in an accumulation of oxyadenosine, which in turn leads to an accumulation of DATP in cells. DATP basically inhibits ribonucleotide reductase, and basically it's going to prevent DNA synthesis. This is an issue since B cells and T cells are mitotically active during infection and development. Also, deoxyadenosine leads to an increase in S adenosyl homocysteine. Since the enzyme adenosine deaminase is important in the purine salvage pathway, both substances are toxic to immature lymphocytes. With all of this in there, what basically happens is that the lymphocytes fail to mature, and that basically has all of the same effects, whether we're talking about an ADA deficiency or a nucleoside phosphorylase deficiency. At the end of the day, you have immature lymphocytes or you have dead lymphocytes, and that kind of means that you're combined deficient in both compartments. Okay, autosomal skid artemis. Autosomal recessive skid artemis is a protein. Well, that's the deficiency. Artemis is the protein. It's a protein in the pathway that mediates repair of DNA. So basically, in this case, we can't repair the DNA that we break. So when we're doing those V, D, and J recombinations, we made cuts, right? So we make a cut here, we make a cut here, we make a cut here. If you want to make these three come together, like this, 
you're going to have to repair the DNA to make them be a correct reading frame. Artemis interacts with the DNA and plays a role in opening of the DNA hairpin that is formed following double strand breaks introduced by RAG. RAG made the cuts, Artemis fixes it. A mutation in the Artemis pathway basically means we can't fix the cuts that RAG made. So you actually wind up seeing kind of similar conditions because it's basically one didn't follow up on the other. So you, if you have a deficiency in RAG, you don't need Artemis. But if you have a deficiency in Artemis, it doesn't matter that you had RAG. You can't fix it. Um, there are a couple of other ones that I'm not really going to mention very much about. So there's chronic mucocutaneous candidiasis, or CMC. Um, this is also thrown in there with APECED, IPEX. Um, basically, these are severe um, primary immunodeficiencies. So CMC results in... Um, a defect in T-cell immunity towards candida. Um, and it's often associated with other endocrinopathies. They present with chronic candida infections of the skin or mucous membranes, or with endocrine abnormalities like hypoparathyroidism, Addison's disease, things like that. Um, sometimes CMC is known as APECED, which is autoimmune polyendocrinopathy candidiasis ectoderminal dystrophy. Yeah, try saying that one a couple times fast. APECD is due to a defect in the AIR gene. Remember, AIR is the autoimmune regulatory enzyme. Basically, it allows for the expression of self-antigens in the bone marrow and the thymus when lymphocytes are developing. This basically is what makes it so that we don't attack self-antigens. So if it's not there, the self-antigen reactive T and B cells are not deleted. If they're not deleted, they're released into the periphery, and then they lead to basically autoimmune diseases. Um, basically, in these diseases, we may see death from complications of the endocrinopathies, especially in undiagnosed Addison's disease. Some patients have been described with CMC and IgG subclass deficiency. Um, IPEX. IPEX is a FOXP3 deficiency. FOXP3 is the transcription factor that's important for regulatory T cells. So remember, regulatory T cells are basically the T cells that tell all of the other cells of the immune system to sit down and shut up and let's end this immune response once and for all. They're the regulators. So they come in and they stop the immune response. If you lack FOXP3, you have trouble stopping immune responses. So you get uncontrolled inflammation and chronic inflammation. WAS or Wiscott Aldridge syndrome. Um, this is a defect in the WASP protein, sometimes referred to as WASP. Um, its function is associated with the actin cytoskeleton, and basically it plays a role in cell signaling. Patients with this X-linked disorder present with thrombocytopenia, severe eczema, recurrent infections, um, typically pyogenic infections. They often have eczema and malignancies. You're basically going to look for... Um, various deficiencies in both the T and B cell compartments. So let's talk a little bit about how we would diagnose these. You're going to see potentially an elevation in IgE and IgA, but don't be surprised if they don't have those at all, if in fact they don't have any antibodies. You're also going to see low isohemagglutinins. Um, that basically is just a further indication that the B cell compartment isn't working appropriately. On top of all of these B cell changes, you're going to see low T cell immunity, which is going to further deteriorate with age and absent antibody responses to polysaccharide antigens. Okay, this is the last one I'm going to talk about, um, and this is actually kind of a big one. Um, this is the common variable um, X-linked severe combined immunodeficiency. Sorry, not common variable, comma gamma chain. So I got, I've told you guys over and over and over again how important cytokines are. Cytokines make the world go round as far as the immune cells are concerned. Well, there is one chain that actually works with so many different cytokines. IL-2, IL-4, IL-7, IL-9, IL-15, IL-21, and TSLP. All of these cytokines use the exact same chain in their receptor, at least one of them. They all use the common gamma chain. Now they have unique chains that make up the rest of the receptor, but the common gamma chain can be found in almost all of them, okay? 
what happens is then we lack the ability to use these cytokines. So for example, IL-7, IL-7 is key in not only lymphocyte development for both B and T cells, it's also key in T cell memory, remember? So if you lack IL-7, you can't even develop them, let alone remember anything. IL-2, this is food. This is how our cells proliferate. We can't use that. We can't make anything. Um, so this basically wipes out your B and T cell response. Laboratory studies are going to reveal markedly decreased numbers of T cells, and usually absence response to mitogens, like PHA. B cells are often absent, although some have elevated numbers of B cells or normal B cells. It kind of depends. Patients are unable to make specific antibody. Why? They have no T cells. Um, An early detection for SCID is now possible via newborn screening using TREC analysis. Basically, we are looking for specific genetic signatures earlier and earlier. Why? Because the clinical syndrome for this one is pretty nasty. Clinically, in SCID, patients develop chronic diarrhea, failure to thrive, oral candidiasis, and infections like pneumonia, otitis media, sepsis, due to bacterial, viral, fungal, and protozoan organisms. Because of the perfective effects of maternal IgG, severe infections might not occur to five to six months of age. But after that, kind of all bets are off. Lymph nodes, tonsils, and thymic shadow on x-rays are not really probably going to be present or findable. Um, so how do we treat it? Well, you can't give them live virus vaccines. Um, and if you need to give them a blood transfusion, make sure it's irradiated blood. Otherwise, you can do immune reconstitution. If they don't get immune reconstitution, skid patients typically succumb between 12 and 24 months of age, likely from infection. Um, people have tried doing transplants of fetal liver, fetal thymus, cultured thymic epithelium, or HLA identical bone marrow, um, and they've been used with varying degrees of success. Um, We've also been able to use haploidentical parental marrow depleted of T cells with monoclonal antibodies or lectins, and those have been successfully used, which extends the potential of bone marrow transplantation to reconstitute patients with SCID. You can also use stem cell transplants from HLA matched umbilical cord. Um, and the other thing that has been thought to be helpful is ADA deficiency has been treated by replacement with polyethylene glycol modified bovine ADA and by gene therapy. So there are a couple ways to combat some of these issues. That's all of the combined immunodeficiencies I'm going to talk about. This one, Omen, ADA, Artemis, and IPEX and CMC slash APECDD. Those are the big ones, okay?